This week on the Stampede, the SMU Mustangs defense finds its stride. We want to be a fast, aggressive defense. Uh, we're going to blitz a lot, turn it loose, play with reckless abandon. Defensive end Taylor Thompson diagrams the life of a student athlete. You pretty much have a triangle of football, social, and school, and you got to pick two. We hit the boulevard for some tailgating with the families of SMU players. Well, we're really excited for him. You know, he's worked really hard, and you know, we're really excited to see him have the opportunity to play. And SMU running back Zach Line writes his name in the Mustang record book. Touchdown, SMU! The SMU Mustangs were back on the practice field in Dallas first thing Monday morning, excited to have their first win under their belt. If we were, you know, 11-0 uh, last year, 12-0 the year before, then sometimes it's hard to get up for these games, but we're, we're not at a place where we can look past anybody. Uh, this team will beat us if we're not there. If we don't play better than we played against Utah, they're going to beat us. Uh, so we, we got to bring, bring our A game. The Mustangs outlasted the UTEP Miners at Ford Stadium 28-17. Defensive coordinator Tom Mason thought his defensive players made big strides after their week one performance. That defensive uh, front, that front seven played extremely well. Uh, we had 27 hits on that quarterback. Now that's a long night. And I thought all of our defensive linemen, all the linebackers, you know, the secondary did a good job of holding the coverage. It was really a, a total team effort. I wasn't worried in the first half. I knew we were getting real close. We were getting hits on him. We weren't getting the sacks, but I knew that would come as the, as the game started to wear down. And, and the thing that I was impressed with in this game is we played to the personality that we want on defense here. Uh, we want to be fast. We want to be aggressive. And we got after him. So that, that's what I was most impressed with is we played to our personality. Standout players on the defense were Richard Crawford, whose pass breakup in the end zone was a momentum changer at the end of the first half. He had that ball actually intercepted. The receiver did a good job of pulling the back of his shoulders and a hit on his back in the end zone. The ball came out, but that was a big play at that point in the game, and we're in a tight ball game, 17-21, and uh, probably they would take the lead in that situation, and, and that was a huge play for us at, at that point in the game. And Ja'Garrett Davis's performance won him CUSA Defensive Player of the Week honors. His fumble recovery in the end zone late in the game was the play that sealed the victory for the Mustangs. He came off the edge and beat the, the offensive lineman that was trying to block him. The quarterback was setting ready to throw and he reached out with his opposite hand, which is really unusual, and slapped the ball down off the quarterback's hands. And then he had enough awareness in that situation to scoop that ball and score. And really, that's what sealed the game for us. It seems like Garrett, because of his hustle and the style he plays, he's always making big plays for us. Just one of the better athletes that I've ever coached. But Coach Mason is quick to point out that it's the entire team that contributes to an individual player's success. He's playing with some pretty good defensive linemen around him, so what it does, it forces teams to try to single block him. And you've got Thompson, Hunt, Grenier, those guys inside that Offense has got to count for them, too, and if, if they start overloading for Jagera, then all of a sudden Thompson or, or Hunt or one of those guys comes clean, and uh, it's hard to uh, scheme him. And the other thing we do is we move him all over in the scheme so that uh, teams don't know where he's going to be at all the time. We don't line him up in the same spot. The Mustangs' defense rose to the occasion in the second half against UTEP, but it's a four-quarter game, and SMU's looking for more consistency this week against a quicker Northwestern State? Well, they're uh, uh, very fast. They got their skill guys. They got receivers and they got skill positions that uh, can go. In fact, I think they're probably skill level higher than UTEP was as far as speed and quickness. Uh, their down guys are not quite the level uh, of, I think, UTEP, but uh, certainly the back end and, and the uh, rest of it is uh, he, he's been getting the type of guys that he needs to get to, to be successful. They're going to want to establish a run game with the, with the power and the, and the sweep, and 
we've got to play a, a little bit different style, but we're still going to blitz and get after them. They run, like to run the ball. They're a quick, you know, fast uh, team, but I see us progressing, doing well up front. We've become more of a unit these past games, kind of molding and, you know, getting the chemistry back on again. So I think we can do pretty well against their defense. I think that we're really focusing on uh, their formations and stuff because they have a lot of different variations in their offense of different stuff that they can do with different uh, like personnel. But uh, I think if you just study film a lot and you know the coach is helping us a lot on that and understanding what plays come from different formations, it's gonna help us out a lot. They're a blitz team. Uh, we've always been of the mind that we like to play against those kind of people because they're gonna make some plays. They're gonna get to the quarterback some. But when they're locked up in man coverage all over the field, we feel like with our slot backs in particular, those are good matchups for us, and we'll get a chance to catch a ball in space and make one miss, and it can be a house call. Still, the SMU defense will play the game on their own terms. We want to be a fast, high-speed, aggressive defense. Uh, we're going to blitz a lot, uh, turn it loose, play with reckless abandon. I've, I've been watching the practices so far, and the great thing is, you know, the intensity level, uh, the focus. You know, I think that's, it's at the top now. I think after we got this first winner on our belt, everybody's kind of like, okay, let's get it. You know, it's ready to go. There are many stats in football, but the coaches and players both know one standout number will be the deciding factor in the game. Well, turnovers will happen when you start rallying people to the football. You get more guys around it. Somebody's going to hit it and get it out. And when that happens, we'll have a chance to recover a few fumbles. Really, we always try to try to just play the turnover because uh, coaches stress a lot. If you win the turnover battle, most of the time you win the game. We talk about it all the time, and so hopefully uh, through the uh, you know attrition of the games, you get better at taking care of the football, and you get better at taking the football away. And ultimately, that will decide this game too. I mean, if you are in the plus column, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. It doesn't matter who you are. That's how it is. The name of the late Frank Gans carries a lot of weight around the SMU campus. Coach Gans was a mentor to June Jones and a huge influence in the way he coaches players. So it was a natural fit when it was announced that his son Frank Gans Jr. would be heading up the special teams for the Ponies this season. Well, you know, grew up, you know, in a football family. You know, obviously my father had a tremendous amount of influence on, uh, on this program. Uh, it's uh, pretty pretty prevalent around here when you look in the locker rooms and the signs and the language that we speak on the team. You know, it's uh, it's uh, very um, uh, inspirational. It, it it makes the transition here, coming here, very very easy in a lot of ways. Uh, but also too, it, it makes it tough too because you got high standards. You're being pushed by somebody that uh, was a, a great football coach and a great man. So I think it uh, really puts an additional pressure on me to be the best. I'll feel short, I'll feel short. Get on her, I'll feel short. I want you already on her, I'll feel short. Coach Gans Jr. was enjoying a successful career at UCLA, but the call from Coach Jones to come to Dallas meant a lot. Well, I think the main thing was I like Coach Jones. You know, I, I feel like, you know, his values, uh, the things that uh, he preaches, and uh, having known him for a long time, I just really felt like uh, this was a, a very comfortable move for me to come here, and uh, I felt very good about it. Well, what excites me is uh, he talks the same language that we talk. You know, uh, uh, Frank Gantz Sr., his father, uh, you know, uh, instilled in our kids a lot of the same language, a lot of the same beliefs. And uh, we tried to carry those on and we did a pretty good job of it. But I think Frank takes us a cut above again to that next level that you need to go to on special teams. And it carries over throughout the whole team. Everything that Frank believes in, I believe in, our staff believes in. And those things carry over to every play of the game, not just special teams. Coach Gans understands the pressure his players are under and uses it to his benefit. You know, that, that's their best friend. You know, I think pressure is something that they have to welcome. Life is pressure. You know, there's going to be, there's pressure on everybody, especially in our, the times that we live in now, you know, economically and everything. I don't think there's anybody out there that doesn't have pressure on them. So I think they might as well get it now when they're younger. So when they get out of school and they're going to have to experience it at every level, it's helped me, you know, succeed 
uh, ha having pressure on me all the time. So uh, I think it's something that they have to welcome, and uh, it actually can be their best friend at times. What I bring here is just my knowledge and my experience as a coach. You know, I'm having coached in a lot of different uh, uh, levels in a lot of different leagues. Uh, I think that uh, you learn a lot from your experience, and that's what I'll bring to the team in uh, not only just the coaching staff, but the players and, and everybody involved in the football program. These kids are handling things well. You know, I'm new to them. You know, I have a different way of doing things than maybe other people have been that have had my position. But uh, like I said, I think the one thing that I want to be, just like Coach Jones, is I just want to be consistent with these kids day in and day out. Well, he's a fiery coach. Uh, he's fun to play for. Uh, it's good to have a guy like that coaching the offensive line that's protecting me. So uh, anytime you get a fiery coach, that uh, he does get a little upset if they make a mistake. So uh, kind of having that fire and hopefully getting, instilling that fire in our offensive lineman too. Uh, he's a good coach. Bend your knees, get down low. When you get out of that block, you got to get off of it fast. I love that guy. I mean, he brings a lot of intensity um, to special teams and everything. Even not, not even just with, with special teams, he brings a lot of intensity to the whole team. I mean, his, his mentality is he wants guys in there that are going to work hard for the team and go all out and play physical. He, want, he wants mean, physical guys, and I like that mentality. Uh, coach Gans, he's a very great coach. He's very, real energetic. You know, that brings another side to our, to our whole program and to our, you know, what we believe in terms of how fast we want to play and, you know, how vital it is to, to really, you know, make sure you know your assignments and different things like that. So Coach Gans brings a, a totally new and, and great energy to our, to, to our team. Now what I want to do is I want to get paired. Watch this, okay? When you coach and you've coached a lot of different places, uh, you experience a lot of very good things and some bad things, and I think that just in increases uh, your knowledge of the game of football and not only just the actual game, but all of the things that go around the game, all of the, uh, the nuances uh, that you can help in, whether it be the training room, weight room, equipment room, uh, anything that can help, uh, little details or just advice, sometimes maybe just a hug around somebody's neck, you know, telling them they're doing a great job. Uh, I think uh, being uh, very positive about things. Senior SMU defensive end Taylor Thompson has made an impact on the Mustangs from the moment he stepped onto the turf. He racked up 23 tackles in three starts his freshman year, kicking off a career that has only improved since. We sat down with him to talk about his pony career. What are your feelings about the program as it heads into Coach Jones' fourth year? I feel like it's heading in a really positive direction. Uh, I see a lot of things changing, just like small stuff. And I, I feel like Coach Owens is getting a lot of his recruiting classes in now, so he, he gets to install the program and to his guys that he wants, and you know, it's all like, it's pretty much how he wants it. What does it take to have success on this team? You just, you, you have to do what the coaches ask. You have to be coachable. You have to be disciplined. You have to come out to practice every day, ready to work. Every game has got to be, you know, no mental errors. You got to go full speed every play, because you never know when the big play is going to happen. It's just like, you have to be very dedicated to this sport in order to be successful. How do players manage their time? You pretty much have a triangle of football, social, and school, and you got to pick two. I really focus on a lot of football, and then I try to do as good in school. And then, I mean, it's, it's hard to go out in season because just you have games on Saturday, you get done, especially if you play a lot, you're just dead tired, you don't want to go out the whole next day, you just want to rest, so. And then in the week, we have practice every morning at 7, so you got to go to bed early. So the, the whole social aspect kind of takes a backseat, especially in season. What's your workout routine? I try to make sure I stretch a lot in season because I get really tight. I do a lot of rehab, do a lot of ice bath, hot tub. We have a really good training room staff. Uh, so I go in there and get a lot of work done on my shoulder, my ankle, just like various, like stim and ice or ultrasound. They, and they're really helpful with that. How does it feel the day after a game? Pretty much, especially playing D-line when you're hitting someone every play, it feels like you got hit by a car the next day. Like, it's just like hard to walk, your whole body hurts. Like, it was hard for me to go to sleep one night, the, the night of the game, just because my whole body was just like aching. And I was just like in pain, so it's like it keeps you up. What is your advice to aspiring players? Just the hours that you have to put in, 
I would say, including games and season, we probably put about 55 plus hours in a week. Uh, and that's not even including school, so that's just football only. So it takes a lot of your time up, and I don't think a lot of freshmen are ready to commit to that much time. And it's, it's hard for them, like, say, to go to bed early because we have practice early. They end up getting tired and skipping class, so it's just kind of a, a snowball effect. Listen to the upperclassmen, listen to your coaches because they've had experience in those situations. They can help you out. Just to kind of uh, buy into the program, buy into everything you do, and enjoy what you do. It was family weekend at SMU. Parents, grandparents, and other family members descended on the boulevard cool. to show their support for their kids at SMU. We flew in from Palm Springs, California. Cameron Rogers, defensive back, number 50. The family's all here, the grandfather's here. Proud of the school, big supporters of the school. Jerome Johnson, a uh, parent of Jeremy Johnson. We're here for the parent week here at SMU and uh, looking for a great day here at SMU and hope for a big win tonight. Well, uh, my name is Jeff Reich and um, my wife and Sue came out from San Diego. Uh, our son is a freshman here um, and this is our very first SMU game and experience. This is amazing. The families of the players met for a pregame cookout on the hilltop. As always, the conversation quickly turned to the players and the team. JJ is our son. This is his mother, Nancy. And this is his younger brother, Jake. I'm his father, Joe. We're out here to watch the Mustangs pony up and get after Northwestern <laughs> State. Well, we're really excited for him. You know, he's worked really hard, and, you know, we're really excited to see him have the opportunity to play. You live and die with him. You know, I played college football, and, and I know what he's going through, and, and, uh, you know, you just, you know, he has, he has good weeks and bad weeks, and you just live and die with him because, it, you know, it's a full-time job. The pressure lays squarely on the players on Saturdays, and the family feels it too, but they wouldn't trade it for the world. Well, we all live vicariously through our kids. You know, this is what we do for fun now. When your kids are doing this kind of stuff, it's, for most of us, it's the kind of stuff we wish we could have done when we were their age. So since we couldn't do it, we live while they do it, so it's fun. It's all fun. It gives me goosebumps. I enjoy seeing him come out, and it's just a, like my husband is a dream of his. So I really enjoy seeing all of not just my son. I love. I enjoy seeing all of the boys come out of the tunnel. I, I don't even know if there's words that just explain seeing him come out the tunnel and getting to live something that most kids at this age want to get to do, and less than two percent get to live out. So I'm, yeah, we're really blessed, and he's really blessed to get to experience that. Game day in Dallas. The SMU Mustangs are looking for a big game against Northwestern State. It's one thing to talk the talk, but Pony Faithful are ready to see the team walk the walk. Coach Jones knows the Northwestern State Demons are not to be taken lightly. They got skill and DBs and linebackers and running backs and receivers that can go. You know, hopefully we can uh, contain them up front and, and uh, have the upper edge and the O-line and D-line and neutralize some of that speed. So that's, that's hoping what's going to happen. The key for SMU is a fast start and to try to take advantage of the size and a little more athleticism they have. Yeah, Northwestern State's fast, but SMU should have a pretty good size advantage tonight, and I think the goal is to try to take advantage of that early and to establish themselves early in the game. Quarterback J.J. McDermott led the team on an eight-play, 55-yard drive on the Mustangs' second drive of the game. Beasley motions left, back right. Here's Zach's first touch, and he goes over the pile. End zone touchdown, SMU. Zach Ryan with his fourth touchdown of the season. The drive was a template of the Knights' offensive attack. 
McDermott from a shotgun rolls right. We'll throw quickly that way on an out route. Pass plays to Cole Beasley and Darius Johnson to move the ball downfield, punctuated by rushing touchdowns by Zach Line. Touchdown SMU. Same exact play, but they, they just ran it. Coach June Jones decided to put Kyle Padrone in the game early in the second quarter. He started with a big pass play to Cole Beasley, but this, his only drive of the first half, ended in a field goal. SMU scored on five of its six drives in the first half for a 26 to nothing lead. At halftime, Coach Jones made sure the team stayed focused. Defense, they shouldn't get a first down on us. No more first downs. Offense scored every time you have the ball. Go for the throw. When you got a team like this, you got to go for the throw and learn how to kill, all right? The Demons lined up for a field goal in the third quarter to shouts from the stands of number 82, Margus. A 24-yarder, Marcus blocking with his chest. It's going to be picked up by Jay Scott at the 20. A legend is growing at Ford Stadium, and it is of the 6'8", 295-pound junior kick-blocking machine, Marcus Hunt. The block was his second in two weeks and tied an NCAA record with seven. Another major record was broken as the game wore on. JJ, handoff, back line, big hole left side, cuts in at the two, touchdown, score record five tonight for Zach Line. The game ended, a huge win for the Mustangs, and just what the doctor ordered. Good team win, good team win, enjoy it. Everybody that played the game, I'll get a game ball, get a game ball. Great job by team win. And coming out and doing what, especially doing what we said we needed to do over and over throughout the week, talking about what we need to do. Came out here, come out here and do it. It's you know it's really fulfilling to know that, you know we can step up to when we need to do it. Wide receiver Cole Beasley was a major factor, hauling in 11 passes for 171 yards. Coach Jones decided we were going to throw the ball today, and he got me a lot of opportunities. And the uh, quarterbacks did a good job reading everything, and I was getting open. So I mean, yeah. success, successful out there. Zach Line remained humble after scoring more touchdowns in a game than SMU greats Oak Walker and Eric Dickerson. You know, the whole line again, block great. Um, kind of push those guys around a little bit. Um, I was kind of slipping and sliding the first half. I had to get rid of those cleats. I was giving them a try. They, they failed the test. So I went back to the old, the old practice cleats, and they held up good. So, you know, we just we did sound football. We were able to throw the ball around a little bit more, which is good to see. And they just basically said from the 20 in was my area. and. Yeah. We, did, we did a good job there. But as always, it was a team effort with a team focused on their motto, one game at a time. This week and this week only. You see, you see we focused on this week and this week only. It wasn't, not worried about Memphis, not worried about TCU. We worried about this week. We, you know, going to enjoy this win. And then tomorrow, you know, we look at the film. And then, uh, you know, Monday started looking at, uh, at Memphis. 90% of football is right here. It's what you believe you can do what you, you know, you know, get everybody believing and getting confidence. And now we need to keep on building on that because, uh, like I said, if you don't believe it, nobody will believe it. So this, we got to get the kids believing, and this really helps.